Hello Internet, very sweaty Hewlett here with another burn and learn for you and I'm hiding in the cave today because uh, lovely, fabulous Maria is here doing some tidying and cleaning for us and um, and uh, it was her first day without Mars. So we had a little, a little moment where we talked and reminisced and she's been worried about the dog for a while now as we, as we all have. So every time she left, she would take photos just to make sure because she thought that could be the last time she saw him. And of course the last time she saw him was the last time she saw him. So we had a little, a little sort of a little little going down memory lane with that, and it was really it was very lovely. And uh, uh, I uh, I do find it uh, sometimes I find it a bit exhausting because you just after a while you just get you sort of get sort of tired of being sad about stuff. But uh, uh, this was nice because it was sort of we were happy about it, and it was it was sort of I feel like we're moving into another stage of of uh, of missing our dire wolf, <laughs> as I like to call him, uh, Mars Bar. So uh, kind of a Kind of a nice, a nice morning, I would say, of uh, you know, of thinking back to the good stuff rather than sort of concentrating on actually having just lost them. So, um, anyways, uh, Bird and Learn, for those of you who don't know, is my bit to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son, to enjoy the twilight years with my brilliant, beautiful wife Jane, and I hate exercise, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it, and then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible. So that's why I'm here. Um, and uh, so today, uh, you know, I've been doing some more reading of this Systems Thinker book, which is such a weird fit for me because it really isn't. It's sort of outside of my realm of interest or or um, uh, or certainly any kind of expertise. But it just really struck me as an interesting book and so I've been plowing through it so much so that I got lost today. I just, I had my electronic dance music going and I was reading this book and like 55 minutes went by. That's how to exercise, my friends. That's the beauty of the burn to learn in my mind is that you get, you, you're so concentrated on all this fabulous learning that you forget that you're just on, you know, on a miserable torture machine the whole time. So uh, it just a fascinating look at the world, like a different way of looking at the world for me because it was, this whole idea of systems thinking is that nothing is truly isolated. Everything somehow relates to everything else. And um, uh, that that there's no way to truly map the entire system, but that we should be looking at larger view uh, perspectives on how everything um, reacts to other things. So they were doing th things like, this guy was talking about things like uh, um, the decline of the Roman Empire and just how that was a beautifully formed, incredibly uh, effective and, uh, um, and successful system that fell apart when components in that system, when basically people in that system started fighting for control, when there was a vacuum for power at the top, um, and how you know different sections of the system can malfunction and feedback and, and destroy the rest of it if, if, um, uh, if they're allowed to. Um, and that how impossible it is for us in our specific situation, like right now, if there was some kind of a news broadcast about some cataclysmic political event or something, that we wouldn't know how that's going to pan out. Like it's very sort of, you know, Sunday morning uh, couch quarterback type thing calling the plays after the fact as opposed to actually, um, um, you know, knowing all the facts. So basically we will make the best decisions based on um, that we can based on the information we have. And so for the most part, people have very poor information or in some cases, maybe just very poor judgment. But uh, that was sort of the stuff that they're talking about. And it was kind of interesting for me because I'm I'm constantly, I'm in this situation now where I've, I, I've said I would do, I'm on my third year of the tech terrors, which is basically I bring in old stuff, we pull it apart, we have fun, we break stuff, and then we, we do things like, you know, robotic arms and robots and stuff, and anything I can get my hand, anything I'm interested in, I bring it in, and generally because I'm excited about it, the kids get excited about it, and it's really, I just, I love it. Um, I love it so much that my son is no longer at the school, but I'm still doing the program there, so. Um, but the problem is that I, I realized last year, and I didn't really address, and then this year it's come up again, is that we're so oversubscribed. Like we have room for like two, maybe two and a half of these classes and there's only room for one, like one lunch program. And even that's only like 40 minutes. It's not a lot of time to get stuff done. So I started thinking, how can I expand this without, you know, breaking the bank and, and without you know, eating up all of my time. And then I thought, well, wait a second, I've got this, I got the cave. The whole basement is basically cleared out now. I can, I could do a little reno and we'd have a great maker space. So what if I invite the kids to come here and do the stuff here and I can buy some more toys and we can play with it and, uh, and uh, they get a little bit of an education and I had a lot of fun things to play with and we could do some videos and I just think it would be a really, 
I see that as a very fun way to spend my time. And uh, so I was thinking about how do I make this work? And I start, you know, you're reading the systems thinker, you start looking at, you know, what are your, what are your inflows and outflows and, and, and how this whole system would work and how the various different parts of my life and my finances and, and the house itself and my family, et cetera, would be affected by this decision. So it's just a it really, I'm finding it actually very useful, um, very useful read so far. And I think that's why I sort of got sucked into it. They were talking about the economy and the, the deficit and just the, the uh, um, you know, the way the system itself works against itself in the way of the deficit, because, you know, you've got a politicians who want to be voted back in. So the last thing they want to do is start cutting things. So the last thing they want to do is cut the, the, the national debt, but the national debt gets bigger and then the, the um, um, uh, interest rates are bigger than, than every year and no one wants to cut them. And there's just sort of this, this self-fulfilling loop of destruction, basically. Uh, you know, again, just, I, I'm not explaining it well, but just, I find it fascinating because again, it's not an area that I'm, I generally read about. So I'm, I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of rather, I'm rather taken with it because wow, well, it's just new stuff. I love learning new stuff. What can I say? So um, I would love your thoughts on the makerspace and on tech terrors and that kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping Easy Robot will help us out with some robots this year, which would be fantastic because that's like the best stuff to play with um, and uh, sneak some learning in with these cool robots. But uh, I would be very curious to know what people's thoughts are on that, whether that's something they would be interested in. Maybe, you know, is that something that people would be interested in seeing if I had the kids do some videos or work with the kids on some videos and stuff as well as actually making stuff, we can create some content as well and maybe that could could help fund it or something. But um, anyways, very interested to th hear your thoughts. And if anyone's got makerspaces going, please let me know. I'd love to know about it. Um, or even just STEM or STEAM stuff that they're working on at school. Um, I have been working on a new uh, STEAM video. I've got a great new name for it. I'm calling it STEAM Engine because they're, they're, they're engines that, that I'm hoping will inspire people into the STEAM stuff. And in this case, it's, uh, it's firefighting technology. So cool. Because firefighters, like everyone wants to be a firefighter as a kid. So I thought, what a great way to introduce them to some technology and some physics and, and math and, and all that kind of stuff with these new technologies that are out there. So I thought that would be a, to me, that is a, a great STEAM engine for people to use. And so I'm going to uh, record a little thing on that, uh, hopefully later today, actually. I've done a lot of research and man, this stuff is stuff is so cool so you'll i think you'll really like that anyway so i babbled on long enough i gotta go get a coffee can you believe it i haven't had one yet it's true so until we geek again sweat or not here i come cheerio